Okay, well, I actually, I think everyone who's kind of um, posted on the threads and has like clicked emojis and stuff to indicate they might be coming is here. So I think we should get going. Um, I noticed, I think Rebecca, you did, or you're doing the package docs with John. Um, Arthur, you, do you go to, you go to package docs as well, right? Yep. Cool. So you guys are kind of familiar with like this sort of wonky version of a book club that's non-linear and just whatever we, whatever we want to do kind of thing. Um, so the main uh, objective of this meeting, I think, will just be to lock in the first package that we're going to look at and that we're going to go through together. And if there's not a clear consensus or there's no way to reach one, I think we'll just stick with the default, which was ggplot. Um, but after I've gone through a few things, I think when we do some introductions and stuff, if everyone could just say, you know, like my preference would be this package or that package, I'll note them down and we'll see how things look. Um, there's no meeting next week. So I'm going to be away next week. And we figured we wanted to start, get it started now so that we'd have a bit more time to, well, I could work on the first package, like laying out the documentation and, and rather than wait till March where things would kind of, you know, just fall away. We did want to get this one in, but apologies that there's no meeting next week. I think, so I've done, this is my second or third, well, third now book club, I guess. Um, I think most of you guys have done book clubs here before or have seen them, but it kind of goes about saying that any kind of bigotry or bullying or like lack of tolerance or anything like that is, is zero tolerance. And I think in a different book club, Russ um, introduced, he was saying like this community is so good and so respectful anyway, that that's never been a problem. And I wouldn't expect it to be a problem in this book club, but I do think it's something worth noting ahead of time. Um, okay, so what do I personally see as the goals for this, this book club? Like, what was the motivation? I think it's not an introduction to any of the packages. Um, it's not to learn ggplot from scratch and get plots up and dig really deep. It's more to build upon knowledge that we already have of each uh, package and to find kind of like the hidden gems or the different arguments in the functions that we're all quite familiar with that help us do things that we didn't know about before or will help us do things in the future that we wouldn't know arguments exist for or functions exist for. I think that's really interesting. Um, it does present a bit of a challenge in that it, there's not an obvious flow to go through a whole package's documentation. Like we'll take a look at ggplots, for example, that John kindly put together. And if we were to go linearly through the different sections, it would take us about six months to get through ggplot. And I think personally, I don't have six months to put just into ggplot. So I'm hoping we can figure out a way to cover you know, the broad strokes in four to six weeks a time for each package. Um, we will be reading one package at a time generally, but I do think there's an argument for some packages like scales to feature in the ggplot, um, for example, sections. We, we can discuss that, whether people would be into that or whether that would be too confusing. Um, but I do think there are some packages that naturally go really well together. Like for example, when we get on to per, it would make a lot of sense to include fur in that same like section, just because most of the functions are identical and uh, not identical, but they do the same thing. They have very similar syntax. You just change the F for the P and wouldn't perhaps make sense to do per then followed by a long deep dive in fur. Um, in terms of documentation, we will be looking at like function level documentation. So the, the help, but we'll also be looking at the various vignettes, um, different articles. I'm quite open for, I don't know what you guys think about this, but if you know of a really good resource like our bloggers or something that has great documentation that doesn't sit, for example, in ggplot's documentation, and you'd like to go through a tutorial or pick out some parts of a tutorial or a walkthrough, as long as 
that material is like sourced or referenced um, and we have some links to it, then I think that works as well. So we don't have to stick exactly to the official documentation. Um, yeah, how do, does anyone want to add something to this? Like, do they have different goals? Would they like to clarify what they want from, from the book club? Or are we all kind of aligned? Yeah, uh, go through it, Lauren. Hi there, nice to meet you. Um, I was just curious, this is, um, for me, I'm just learning R. So I've done uh, the R for all of us, just like an intro, but I don't have like the deeper understanding. So I was just wondering if this is what might, would this still be a good place to start? Because I heard that the tidyverse is a good package to start with because it's more focused on the, you know, data science type applications. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to chat. Yeah, well, I think it's definitely like, it's not an exclusive club, right? There's going to be a huge range of experience. Um, there's going to be people with much more experience than I have, even though I'm facilitating and people with, you know, a lot less. Um, if I was starting out my journey of learning R again, I think if I wanted um, a really thorough introduction to the tidyverse, there is, there's a textbook written by Hadley, um, who's, if you're not familiar with him, you will be soon kind of thing. He's a big name in the R community, he works at Posit. And that's R for data science. And that's a very good um, introduction to learning, not quite from scratch, but like taking the basics and going into the tidyverse. There's another book, and that sometimes has book clubs uh, in R for DS. There's another, I forget what it's called, uh, Hands-On Programming with R, I think, by... Is it, Garrett Goldman, or yeah, I think it's, I can find it after, but that's also a really good book for like, say, if you wanted to learn about for loops and various different programming things, that's a great book to start. But what, what I would say is that if you knew, say you're interested in learning ggplot and we start ggplot, then there's no reason you couldn't follow along and take or present different sections. Um, it might be a case of like coming along to one or two of the first ones and seeing how how you get on, whether you're enjoying it, whether you feel like there's stuff you can get from it, right? Because that's I think that's the most important thing is just that you're getting something from it. And it's yeah, there's there we considered, I think, putting like prerequisites, um, but I don't think we did, and I don't think we necessarily need to. But so that's a really kind of long-winded way of saying i'm not sure <laughs> but i i think you should try it out and see see whether it works for you um yeah i don't does anyone else have anything to add there okay well i think um we should do an introduction so to ourselves right as, as people and as data people or programmers whatever we are just so that we can all kind of know who everyone is and know the kind of things we're interested in. So like I'm Jack, um, obviously I'll be facilitating the book club. You may or may not have seen me in the R for Data Science Slack. I do probably spend a bit too much time troubleshooting or like what I think Tan Ho calls it like getting nerd sniped. Um, but personally, I, I really enjoy it. I'm a data scientist like by day, um, actually a data scientist by night apparently because I spend a lot of time doing these book clubs. Um, my interests are really in natural language processing. Um, to do that well, you need to do lots of other things like know all these packages, data wrangling and all that stuff. Um, and I think just personally, I find learning quite fun in general. So if I were picking the packages, I think I would probably go for the new deep layer as like my number one, because it's just come out. And I think there's some huge changes in there that would be really interesting to get like right at the front of the pack with. And um, after that, I would probably go for a deep dive into per and fur. Um, there are some functions in there like accumulate and walk and uh, hoist that I've always, I know they exist, but I'd really like to actually get them. Um, and then probably, I don't know, string R or deep liar. Oh, sorry, string R or GG plot. Um, but they would kind of be, and I'm just going to note down like, each person's one, two, three, when you get to it. So I, I'd go for deep layer, um, per, 
and then I'll just put GT plot. But yeah, that's me. Looking forward to this one. Uh, not looking forward to meeting you all. I think on my screen, um, Lauren, you're first, and we'll just we'll go around that way if that's okay. Okay. Well, thank you for organizing this. Um, so my background is I'm a sociologist and I've done statistical analysis using you know, SPSS and SATA, so you probably get that a lot. Um, I did invest some time into learning Python and I have done a little bit of NLP, but it was with a group, right? And so we presented the work, but I don't feel like it was a few years ago in 2019. So I have some understanding of programming language, but not as much on the R language. And so my goals for this would be you know, learning how to do things I would normally have done in those other packages and are, right? Like maybe just doing some regression analyses or doing like group differences and making sure that your data is clean and all of that fun stuff to start with. But I do also have an interest in some of the other like ML applications. Cool. And I think based on, you know, what you say, it'd be unfair to ask you for packages that, you know, you want to learn, right? It's like tidyverse in general. So I'll put you down as kind of open to anything. Um, and nice. So I think next person I'm going clockwise around is Arthur. Hi, I'm, I'm Arthur Shaw. Um, so I'm kind of working, um, I, I guess I'm working in a uh, household, household surveys at an international organization. And, uh, uh I guess like Lauren, uh, uh, I I'm coming from statistics and, using uh, uh, principally Stata and other statistical software packages. Uh, I'm relatively new to R. I guess I've been using it for, you know, two, three, maybe four years now. Um, and I guess in terms of my interest uh, for packages, I, I think I, I, I echo your interest, Jack. Um, for, for me, you know, I'm, I'm using most of these packages on a regular basis now, but uh, I, I was kind of thinking that it might be good to catch up on some of the recent major changes to some of these packages like Dplyr and Per. Um, uh, beyond that, I, I think um, I'm not giving a ranking so much as just kind of mentions, but uh, also I think there's some packages that I've, I've, where I've only scratched the surface and I think I might like to go deeper on like uh, Luberdate or I guess the, uh, what is the new one, Clock. Um, and uh, then, uh, what else did I have? Yeah, um, may, maybe maybe a little bit for, for tidy R. I, I use a lot of the kind of pivot wider, pivot longer, but uh, I can't say that I'm that uh, familiar with the, the rest of what tidy R has to offer. I guess I guess I'll stop. I'll stop there. Thanks. Cool. I think yeah, tidy R is a great one as well because there's like crossing and expand grid, and there's so many things you can do with that that you might that never you wouldn't think to do. Um, but what, what I'm going to put down there, I'm just going to put deep layer per and lubricate slash tidy up. Um, okay, so then next one right is Rebecca. Hi, um, thanks so much for, for facilitating this and um, for being a very active moderator. I think our for data science Slack is definitely responsible for a lot of my transition. I'm a biostatistician by job title, though with a fair bit of um, imposter syndrome there. Uh, I've been using R most pretty regularly for about three years. Um, and my top packages would be, yeah, I think Dplyr's announcement last week um, about their release. I'd really, so I, I feel very comfortable, not very comfortable. I feel comfortable with most of, most of these, but on a need to know basis, like I've gotten by with probably three per functions, right? <laughs> and I'm always surprised by what's out there that I don't know. So um, I think starting with the places that have big changes, you know, I think things like four cats or, or even string R kind of like you can find, you know, you go to the documentation, you can find what you're looking for. But I think I don't know what I don't know in things like dplyr's new release and, and per, which um, somehow is very hard for my brain to understand why there are like 30 per functions out there. And I'm sure if I did understand why, I would solve problems a lot faster than I currently do. Um, and yeah, ggplot, I feel like I'm still a, I mean, I ggplot all the time, but I feel like I still look like a kindergartner with it. And that's good enough for most of my use cases. I'm like, I would like to look a little slicker. And um, I think 
I think there are probably a bunch of things out there that I just don't even know about. Cool, nice. Um, so I'm just like gonna double, I've, I'm doing deep layer per ggplot as the three. Cool. And I think data science is just like an imposter syndrome world, right? Like everyone all the way through at some point has felt it or still feels it. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a good world. And then, so next, next way around is Shah. And Shah, if that's not like the exact correct pronunciation, please like let me know. Yeah, that's the correct pronunciation. Um, actually, oh, so I am uh, doing PhD right now. And I am writing my thesis in R Markdown with the child documents. And uh, I have introduced to the uh, for data science community through something I don't know on Twitter. Then I joined it. And this is actually my first time in any book club. So, and uh, actually, uh, people listen to all kind of podcasts, but I am listening to these videos of R for data science whenever I am traveling. So, and uh, that's it. I'm, I'm interested in uh, the use of the map family and the per package because I have never used it. I am using the deep layer mostly for my data wrangling and ggplot. Thank you. Cool. So like in, in order of preference, if it comes to that, I've got per number one deep layer and ggplot as two and three. Um, with that is that correct or yes or... okay nice so then sorry last and certainly not but least um caroline hey everybody nice to meet you um i'm caroline i have just finished my undergraduate in bioinformatics um so um, more using python um but also certainly a little bit of r um, I want to do my master's in September in data science. So I'm trying to upskill before then. Um, and yeah, so I'm doing a little bit of freelance data analysis, things like that. But I just find that I'm taking so long to find what I need. Um, and I think something like this is really going to help me understand the patterns and see um, yeah, how things are set up. Um, cause I feel like I'm trawling through references and stack overflow and all of those good things. I'm getting there in the end, but I definitely need like a greater understanding. So I'm super excited to be here. Um, and then in terms of preferences, also dplyr R for me, um, and per, and then tidy R I think as well. Okay, sweet. Well, so, I mean, it's, um, it's kind of clear from the the preferences that deep layer would come in at number one and per would come in number two. Um, and I hope I didn't game that by having those as my as my packages, right? And like suggesting to everyone that that's what has to happen. Um, but I would, I think unless there are strong kind of, I don't know, strong reasons not to, I think deep flyer is such a good one anyway to do. It's just like the workhorse of so many things. And like, I think Rebecca was pointing out the 1.1 release is just, is it's not, it's not breaking, but there's so many cool changes that it's a great time to ride that wave. Um, so yeah, thanks for introducing yourselves, everyone. Um, I think the, the next thing we have to settle. Um, so saying we're going ahead as deep fly as the first package is when we present or when a person presents and I'll do the first week after uh, next week when we start is you can choose I think whether to come prepared with slides which would be like a typical book club would have slides um, or you could you could just demo things so when John started out with package docs he had like about 100 tabs open, right, where he would go in, grab the tab that he wanted based on a function, pull up its documentation and talk through it kind of piece by piece. And I think if I share my screen, um, you will see some package docs that John was like very kind to put together, say, for ggplot2. And it would be, this would be an example. Um, and this is certainly not to be taken literally, I think, because like I said, if it took till August to get through ggplot, we might 
have a few dropouts and we, we might struggle a little bit. Um, but you could imagine that a person starting on this group, so this is me, but it will be for deep life, would come in and lit, go through the reference. So uh, you click this, uh, you've got lots of different functions. Um, it would be up to the person who's taking it that week to decide which functions they focus on um, and how they do it, whether it's in slides or whether it's in code along. We would then between us document which functions were covered and we'd kind of tick them off. And by the end of a few weeks, say we would have, um, we'd have another thing that's like, and uh, that could be week one or it could be the function here and we just we tick or we'd leave them off and i'll put that together for deep player um but there was i didn't want to end up doing it all for ggplot and then we end up using a different package uh so i've used john's thing that he's very kind to put together um he links to like the ggplot doc separately so you we could go through cheat sheets um I think cheat sheets are great there. There's absolutely no shame in using cheat sheets. Um, they are part of the documentation and they will help you do a lot of things that you'd otherwise spend time looking for. In So if you're not familiar, say, with the standard package down um, kind of layout of, of a package, you've got the name of the package, you've got the reference, which that has the different functions. So if you click on function within a different reference section, you get the help file, which is like the equivalent of typing question mark and the function into your console. Um, more practically, it would be a case of like, I'm the first person presenting, I've decided to do ggplot basic. So I read through this documentation in the week, look at what I kind of find interesting, make notes on it, document it separately so that I know what I'm going to go through. And then at any time kind of in the session, someone can can stop and say, well, oh, that bit's cool. Like, what's all this stuff up here? Like, why is it using do.call and I'll apply? And as a group, then we could we could discuss it, we could look at it, and we could decide whether that's something that we want to look into separately. I think that's kind of like the key workflow right it's picking individual functions and it's finding the cool stuff within them but for most packages you'll also have the articles or vignettes and yeah if you click on any of them you're going to get some cool faqs here for faceting and i mean the documentation is so good that it almost feels silly to actually click on it and read it because it does exactly what it says it does um but yeah, we would document that and we would have um, a checklist of everything that we need to cover and have covered. I mean, whether you wanted to do it in slides or I think a repo could be cool and feel free to jump in. I, I think a repo could be quite nice wherein we have different R markdowns for different weeks and a person puts in the code that they're going to run through and if you're if you're picking out say a function that has a nice argument you use one of the tidyverse like data sets like diamonds or string our sentences or whatever you need to use and you could go through the function in a in a nice way in an rmd with some comments or some documentation such that that lives on for everyone else who comes after or um or catches up late or anything like that i think a really interesting thing that might be too much work for anyone presenting would be like putting together really basic shiny apps that do interactive things with different arguments, but that would be totally like, I don't know, you get the gold star at the end. You're not expected to do that, but it would be, it would be really cool or it could be nice, but I'm very open to how anybody wants to present um, between slides, a repo or some apps so i don't know if does anyone have like a preference there or you guys who stayed on particularly in package docs i'd be interested to know what you guys have found out works like nicely for this kind of club yeah i, I missed uh i missed last week as we could have uh started uh 
the test that. So I, I don't know if Rebecca was there and can speak to it, but I think for the use the use of this, it was all kind of live live demo and and or and or talking through. Um, one thing that was kind of really helpful at the end is uh, uh, John had uh, happened to be working on, I, I guess maybe inspired by use this and kind of created his own package that was kind of a, the, 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 the John version of, of use this. And that was kind of nice to, to see how he done that and see how he brought together all those disparate pieces. Um, um, yeah, so I, yeah, I, I think when it was possible for him to kind of show something and show how it worked, I think that was a far more effective communication mechanism than, than maybe uh, just kind of slides and lectures. But I don't know, Rebecca, if you, you'd attended and seen any advancements in how, how John has been tackling things? I did. I think I did go to test that, but um, it was similar to, to what he did for the package docs. Um, I think that I think that slides, I mean, I, I'm fine with it being by user choice, but I think it feels like a bit much overhead and I'm a little worried it might, as you pointed out, that there are six months worth of ggplot as laid out. And I feel like with slides, you're a little bit more inclined to slow down versus if you're kind of just walking through documentation that, you know, is not conceptually hard to do, to understand, but it's just like, hey, here are all the things that are out there that you've never bothered to learn about. So maybe it's just kind of by, by personal judgment about whether or not about which way to go about for a particular group of functions. Yeah, I, I definitely side along the walk through code along, pick out documentation rather than prepare slides. And um, because like you said, it's it's more pleasant for the person who's preparing and it's better for the person who's receiving the information. Um, so I, I if, if we have some kind of like consensus and people say like, we're not gonna do slides, we're not gonna make a book down, um, I'd be quite happy to have that as a default. Just what did, what would you guys think about having that as like built into the structure? Um, I will agree. I mean, we can actually read the documentation and discuss what is going on in the documentation. I guess that's a better option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, you pick out interesting bits of documentation, we show it, and yeah, we talk about it. And if, if there's, because I can, I can imagine in um, some of the things in the new deep lie, like the dot group by being a new argument, that will be quite instructive to see that done with code, right? And look at the old way, maybe. Um, and then other things, yeah, you won't, like I think Sean, Rebecca, you're both hinting at like, we won't need code examples. We just need to know that something exists. Yeah, so I'd also point out that that uh, John does, uh, has done a heck of a lot of the R packages meetings. So I think that the less overhead you ask for presenters, the more likely that um, it doesn't fall too much on one person. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I think, uh, that's something I haven't actually mentioned is the sign up sheet. Um, so I'm glad you did mention that. Let me get it up. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is the one. I don't know why this is colored. Did I do this by accident? If I ruined John's nice document, I'm not sure. But um, when when we're in full flow, there will be a presenter sheet just like this. And you come along and you put your name down here, write your name. In here and then it automatically tallies up um ideally we would you know we would rotate this very much so that it's like nearly even between us um but if, if someone doesn't want to present or um say if i don't know something comes up when you're meant to present and you can't then i'll usually step in and i'll be kind of happy to talk at you for <laughs> another hour um but yeah, I, I think that's a good point. If the document, if the thing we have to each do when we present isn't as rigid as slides and reading everything, then probably more people are going to want to come forward. Um, so yeah, that's that's good. Uh, that's kind of like all I have for today. Um, I imagined beforehand that we were going to be getting some time back because we wouldn't act, we didn't know what package we were going to do. So I haven't prepared DeepLayer, but that's um, 
for me, that's I. I think I've taken care of everything that I need to, and yeah. If this, if anyone wants to come back on anything or propose an idea, you can do it now, or you could do it by Slack. Um, we've got two weeks until we start. So yeah, if there if there is nothing, though, I think we could all we could all get off early. So Jack, one sorry, one question, um, if I may, or maybe kind of two questions about organization. I mean, the in terms of like what gets presented, uh, did we want to take kind of a, like a very organic presenter-led approach, uh, as in as in like the other package uh, club, where basically you know, someone gets to present what they want by and large, uh, you know, both both in terms of order and in terms of content. Um, so I guess that's the first question, and then kind of the second question is how would we want to treat the vignettes, because I feel like that's something that we didn't really dive into much for 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 use this. We just kind of took our own um, walking tour of, of of functions, and I mean, we happen to I think go over a lot of materials that are otherwise covered in the vignettes, but we didn't treat the vignettes as like an entity that we needed to to go over. Yeah, um, I think definitely it should be like organic, as you're saying about package docs, right? Um, if so, the the structure that was put in with John, I think John was pulling out all of the documentation that we might use, but that's like, that's a structure that is there to be knocked down at the first kind of call if somebody wants to and to do something else. That if it gets like too difficult to follow and everything's kind of random, I think we'd probably just talk about it a little bit in the channel um, and we'd just maybe come together and plan again. But I don't, I, I don't think that would be a problem. Vignettes, I think, hmm, because vignettes is such, the vignettes are going to be so different for every package. Um, it's hard to know. I think maybe we should have it as, as a like, you can if you want to, but you, we don't have to treat the vignettes as an entity that's going to be ticked off. And mostly it's going to be the function reference workflow going in, looking at the arguments and doing it. Um, I could imagine for something like ggplot, you might want to do more of the vignettes. Um, whereas for deep player, it's like individual functions like mutate and stuff, they do so much work and their documentation is going to be so rich that you could easily pull out just from the reference, like enough content on one function to do a whole hour. Um, yeah, I think I would side with mainly using the function reference over the vignettes. But like I said, if somebody knows a, a really good vignette or a really good external piece of documentation, then they are free to bring them in. Cool. Um, yeah, nice. Well, I, if anyone was expecting this to last the hour and it hasn't, then I'm, I'm sorry that we haven't met expectation. Um, but I think, yeah, I'm... I'm very happy that in two weeks' time we'll kick off of Deep Flyer and we'll get a much more clear view of all the present the presenting and what gets documented and what we keep. Cool. So nice, nice to meet you guys. Um, and thank you. Nice. I'll see thank and you. Lauren, I'll link you to those two books that I mentioned um, to see see how you like those as well because they're pretty good and um, cool nice to meet you guys and see you in a couple of weeks thank you bye bye thanks